Hey everybody, this is the Seventh Rule Roundtable. As you know, this is a fun group and we're gonna introduce them. We've got Bill Erickson out in Montana somewhere. We've got Sirach Lofton, superstar of superstars, of course. We've got hello, hello. doctors everywhere, Susan V. Bruner, <laughs> uh, Anne-Marie Siegel, Mohammed Noor. Uh, we've got Melissa Longo, of course, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, Eve England out in Wales, Lance Lytle out in, I, I always want to say Arizona. It is Arizona. <laughs> we got, we got Gold Du Scott <laughs> out in Virginia. It's close again, man. Why North can't North I? Carolina. South, North South Carolina. Carolina. South Carolina. That's not very close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's closer it's, than uh, Arizona. There's only, so there's only a state between them. There's only a state between them. It, it, it was in the United States. It was pretty it's, close. It's on the side state. of the continent. The continent. And, <laughs> and especially, <laughs> we have Mike Gu driving home from New York City Comic Con right now out in the sticks of Massachusetts. Sticks. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh, I've never been. <laughs> uh, so we are this just, stinks. we're just kind of buzzing over the news, the, the Star Trek news. We had a Discovery trailer that uh, revealed a Ferengi or what we are surmising to be a Ferengi or Ferengi hybrid or something. Uh, there was also like some kind of uh, mixed Cardassian lady. We've got the big news about Robert Beltran and Jason Alexander and a couple others being uh, added to the Prodigy lineup. So I With thought no it would be... <laughs> With no I was in the All pool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Jack, oh, it was doing an awesome photo ops. <laughs> And who, what? Emory? Jack Quaid. I saw the picture that Mike Goo got with him. Really? He signed, he signed it. You got volume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Wait, wait, wait. Hold that oh, up. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> great. Then he drew this at the top. Oh, nice. <laughs> How is uh, Jack Quaid? Nice guy? Very nice. Very nice. Um, awesome. Very warm. And, uh, you know, super willing to go to the extra mile and talk to you and, you know, do the thing on the autograph as well. Do the extra thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, also, uh, oh, by the way, everybody's wearing, not everybody, but a lot of people are wearing some really cool things. Uh, Stu, Sue, let's start with you. Let's see okay. if we can. I've got two, actually. Oh, my God. You suck oh. up. <laughs> there you go, Ryan. There you go. Ryan, the controller who uh, Yay! Wow. That was good. And the bracelet. <laughs> Love that. Uh, so the shirt you can get, if you want, at our Teespring store in the uh, description box below. And the bracelet you could get at Melissa's website, walkingartmadebymelissa.com. <laughs> Pointing towards on, she is on, on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Many boxes are about to be shipped, so get ready because there's some surprises. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> uh, Eve England is wearing a sweatshirt from Abyssinian Kiosk. That's Sirach's <laughs> sister's website, which oh, is awesome. Uh, I'm just guessing Anne Marie is wearing a some kind of Captain uh, Nog Forever or something. Oh, close. I'm wearing that. Frangy eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Frangy eyes. Oh, but also a walking art made by Melissa bracelet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, Lance, I see a point on your shirt. Is that a some kind of uh, Captain Proton thing? Wow. Oh. Cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Proton. And is that a Klingon? Visor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the black one. Yeah. Goldu Scott's obviously wearing more Abyssinian kiosk, it seems. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, Mike Gu like sporting Abyssinian kiosk at New York City Comic Con. That is awesome. And everybody at home, if you didn't know, his sister also sells from her website, Ethiopian Coffee, which Mike Gu has. Crazy. That's it. You know, <laughs> Mike actually told me the only reason he puts that bag of coffee there is so he can use the carpool lane. But oh. <laughs> it's like, oh no, no, it's a 
There's a person in this. Not wrong with being shrewd. Yeah, being How shrewd. are you gonna <laughs> grab me out? Yep. Uh, Melissa's wearing an awesome Captain Nog Forever shirt. It seems Yay. beautiful. Yes. Uh, Muhammad's wearing a uh, chat pack. That's from Walking Art made by Melissa. My goodness, so many shirts today. And oh my God, Bill Erickson, your shirt. It's the t-shirt the t-shirt of the month club. I God, that I keep on. forgetting. Everybody at home, he's wearing a shirt that says prune juice, a warrior's drink. A warrior's drink. Okay. And nice. we are joined. Wait, there's a blur. What? There's there's like where's my war face? What does that say? What? I couldn't see what? it. Oh, it says a warrior's drink. Oh yeah, yeah. No, below that. Below. <gasps> But wait, juice. there's more. Prune juice. Oh my oh, gosh, amazing. Juice. New. <laughs> <laughs> so we are joined, uh, better late than never, by Superman <gasps> himself, Yay! Lex Luthor, I should say, Homer Freezy out somewhere in New Year's. <laughs> there he is. Bienvenue Ooh. to Le Monde. You didn't happen to go to New York Comic Con too, did you, Homer? Uh, not exactly, but I can tell you more after. Oh. <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> Sounds a little... Let's say little I was able, uh, not too long ago, I was across the street from the Javits Center. Oh, okay. you have a photo op. Not exactly. Ooh. Do you want to tell not us exactly, it. or are you teasing for when we're not recording? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Okay, so we'll we'll hold it for when we're not recording. Then classified, Mike Goose says. Classified. <laughs> yes, yes, classified. Yeah. So what I miss? I want to hear more about inside Comic Con. Yes. Yeah, so all you missed was us talking about shirts and giggling. Uh, but since oh. Mike Mike Goo was That's, the only one here that was in there, we... and Lord yeah. Shardick. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see Mike. Uh, I have to scroll through. Uh, Mike, I'm what did we miss? Right. What did we ah, miss there's... over the weekend? Um, well, I had never gone to a Comic Con. I mean, my first con ever was STLV, and then I went to the one in New Jersey. Um, but a Comic Con, I'd certainly never gone, and um, it was really cool. I mean, Artist Alley was huge. There was, mm -hmm. you know, maybe like a hundred artists there, and um I, I marina was saying that uh, it was like 50 to 70 percent um capacity by her estimation um so but marina it, it, yeah i was gonna say Crab 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 <laughs> the yeah. super fan of i think all uh, of the treks or something um i always see her in line i saw her in line for the photo op for kate um and 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 i think this 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 morning at the prodigy premiere which was amazing um wait you got did you get to see the full first episode yeah they Full first episode, and then Kate came out and was like, you know, I'm gonna drop some more. Oh. And then like the Hagelmans were like, oh, of course, of course. And then they <laughs> they dropped some more um, of just Kate. And then um, yeah, and then they did a short panel, uh, no questions. Um, but yeah, it was really, I mean, like that cinematic. And um, I mean, it's so there's it's CG, and they made a they had a Nickelodeon person as well. The, I think the president of animation or something. Um, and they talked a lot about the decision to go CG and um, it just, it was uh, like, it moved me. It was like, you know, gave me chills um, at multiple points in, in this, um, you know, kids show. And, and it was amazing. Mm. So. Oh my God, Great. Bill, your puppy, now that we can see his face is so, so freaking cute. cute. Oh my God. So cute. Uh, but Mike, so without giving spoilers, <laughs> because I don't even think you're allowed to, uh, how was the Prodigy first episode of Prodigy? Really good. It's um, it's not. Uh, it's 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 Star Trek. I mean, there's the the stakes are there. Um, I mean, it's even maybe higher than 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 other pilots. Um, and oh. and yeah, it's it it's a it's a it's a fun group of, you know, I I don't know what I'm allowed to say. I mean, they're like teenagers, right? I don't know what the the byline is for, but um, yeah, it's. I think there's a lot to look forward to. Um, Kate seems very excited about it. Um, and the new, just meeting the new uh, voice actresses were, or actors and actresses were um, also very interesting. Um, the, uh, there's like a, 
there's like an eight year old or like a nine year old or th- she's supposed to be eight in the show. Um, I don't know how old she actually is in real life. Uh, mm. I don't know her name. Uh, R- Riley. Anahate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's not, no, but she's Rock Puck, um, the big rock. Uh, oh, cool. Character. And um, and it actually is like a like an eight year old girl. So it's um, it's her voice, and that that was very interesting um, hmm. to hear her perspective, and you know, not knowing anything about Trek, um, kind of like Kate though. Um, Kate, 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 Kate doesn't either. They went through and asked everybody who the person was in their family that was the big Trek person, and um, yeah, Kate was like, no, I no love one. that part. It was so nice. <laughs> Um, did you get your picture in the USS Protostar captain's chair? I did take one. Yeah, I didn't play the video game. They had a video game too where you like moved your body and um and did a few things that turned out to be actually in the uh the pilot, uh, which so I won't talk more about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mm. Uh, yeah, he sounds so like fun. he's a producer where he's like i can't tell you right? too much yeah. 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 i know it's the first yeah. episode you know it's great you're gonna love it but i i don't think i can tell you that i i can't wait to this for the second episode for sure and i mean that, that's going to be going on you know with with all the with with um discovery right and and so yeah that'll be super fun cool okay I, my question is mike i'm watching the uh trailer for it right now so i get to see the cg animation that you were talking about and and i guess is there anything about this that reminds you of voyager other than the fact that kate mulk was in it um say robert beltran not yet but <laughs> <laughs> i was at, so i was at stlv here I'll, i'm gonna try to get more light but there, i was at stlv and um and Robert Beltran, like, I don't know if he let slip or not that he was like in it. And I don't know if he, I didn't know if he was joking, you know, and, but today they confirmed it. They talked about a few other characters that would be um, adult characters of other aliens that would be coming on. And then at the end they were like, yep, Captain, Captain Chicote, um, And, and, you know, as with, with Robert, Robert Beltran. So, um, and then, uh, and then the, uh, the moderator, who's Carol Freeman, I think. Um, oh, is Don she Lewis? Captain Freeman? Uh, yeah. yeah, Captain Freeman. Yeah, Don Lewis, which was really cool because she was like Star Trek female captain up there as well. Um, she was like, "Oh yeah, I uh, I definitely had a crush on 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 Chakotay. And then she was like, "Don't don't y'all laugh. Uh, you know that <laughs> you guys." Were that was such a cute moment. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Okay, so. Um... I don't know if we've covered everything. I we've been pretty busy here, so I don't know who who's completely up to date in all the news. Mohammed, are you? Not for not for um, uh, Prodigy because I actually I, I didn't know. Or just about, just of right the weekend. Here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been looking at Twitter. I, I watched the Discovery panel, but I mean, besides, I've just been looking at Twitter, so I'm not not more up to date than anybody else. How was the Discovery panel? Oh, it was it was excellent. It was excellent. I'm sure several of you guys saw it. I mean, it was uh, Michelle Paradise, who's the showrunner and also just a wonderful person. Uh, Sonequa Martin-Green, Anthony Rapp, David Ajala, uh, Blue Del Barrio, uh, Mary Wiseman. Seems like there was somebody else too. I can't remember who else, but yeah, I mean, just the the interactions among them were, was great. They didn't give away a whole lot. They did. They did show the one trailer, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, that's where the that's where we saw the Ferengi. Or Ferengi like thing. It's funny, a lot of people were complaining. I'm like, oh, they ruined the Ferengi. So giant Ferengi like thing. Ryan, I oh, sent you the pictures of like from Twitter, the hypothesis of like what it might be, what it might be a hybrid. Yeah, but like there's so much variation in people already. Like, why can't there be an astronaut like Ferengi? It doesn't, it, yeah, it could be 900 like, years like, later. Yeah, exactly. And we're adding that to it. And yeah. there were some other things in there too. Like, there was that one that, that uh, Michelle Paradise identified as a Cardassian Bajoran human hybrid. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of cool. I love that. You know, so just real quick, the the nitpick in me was like, <laughs> hey, if her eyebrow ridges are showing, and that's very clearly Cardassian eyebrow ridges, why aren't the neck ridges showing, right? And that was my first. Okay. And then I was like, well, hang on a second. Well, I'm no freaking expert on the genetics of Cardassian. <laughs> 
maybe this is a recessive gene and this is don't what the exactly. fuck do I, know? I don't exactly. know anything I'm like why am I crying it's also, about this yeah, you know, it's also not a first generation hybrid it's a later generation mm-hmm. hybrid so right. even Literally, if they're both back. dominant yeah. just as long as they're inherited separately it doesn't matter and at that point you know you could have it just get lost over time even if it is yeah. dominant mm-hmm. so so let that be a lesson to all you nitpickers out there. Sometimes you have to check yourself. <laughs> Sometimes I got to check myself and be like, wait, hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Who, who, what do I know about Cardassian genetics? I don't yeah. know anything. It does show, it's cool. It does show that the, the, the two traits are separable. I mean, that's fair, which is kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, no, I, okay. I thought the discovery panel was excellent. Paramount, Pl- Paramount Plus did drop a new uh, one minute teaser for, for, uh, prodigy with kate mulgrew and the and the kids mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah i haven't seen it yet so cute. it came out I this think morning they just meet her yeah when they yeah. Just meet yeah. the hologram yeah. who's your uh, captain i am yeah. no you're not no i no you're not you're tied up in a chair <laughs> it's awesome yeah. you liked it bill i did are you gonna watch it looking for I'm going to watch it. Of course I'm going to watch it. It's mm. Trek, dang it. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have watched I have watched every episode of every Trek ep- every every Trek show that's come out so far. I am truly OG because I watched Trek in the beginning and I'm watching it now. I I don't play that gatekeeping horse manure. I'm a I'm a Trek <laughs> guy who loves Trek <laughs> for what it offers. You know, Gene would Gene wouldn't like this. I'm like, how do you know he's dead? Come yeah. on, man. I mean, Rod Rod loves everything, so I'm going to go with Rod's take on what his father would <laughs> think about it, as opposed to some knucklehead on a buddy, keyboard, yeah, keyboard yeah, warrior on a keyboard <laughs> hiding in his grandma's basement. Or I don't know. Jeez. Sorry for living in your grandma's basement. I'm sorry. Oh, man, hey. Low rent. Yeah, hey. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. What else did we miss? I feel like there's still more. Uh, Anne-Marie, you're in in New York. What have you heard? Those were the main things. Apparently, I think Chase Masterson was there doing a superhero in real life panel yesterday, which unfortunately was scheduled at the same time as the Discovery panel. I didn't really hear much about what happened there. Yes. Mm. Ooh. I know. Ooh, that that's schedule. That's sad. And then there were some really amazing Roddenberry Network panels that I can't wait to see um, in the next few days when I have time. There was one yesterday um, that Priority One and Women at Warp did about, uh, let me think, that one was, oh, just building community in Star Trek. <laughs> and then there was one today that Women at Warp did about um, how the role women played in creating fandom, which sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then a, a woman oh, and, made me, so oh, there you go. <laughs> be sure none of this would be without BG Trimble. None of Exa- this exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my All goodness. came yeah. down from her. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then a lot of talk about William Shatner going to space this week. And actually yes. at the to probably go party last night, we got approached by BBC to actually like um, interview us because they're doing a big Star Trek special um, from BBC News. But let's we'll take this opportunity around the time William Shatner goes to tell us who to proudly go is. Oh, well, they're a new nonprofit um, for the LGBTQI plus community that's based in New York. And so the fundraising goes to like um, Broadway Cares, um, Equity Fights AIDS and other charities around the city. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, They're and also new. cosplay. Also, Lawrence Niels from Cosplay Cabaret. He kind of kicked off New York Comic Con, um, although it wasn't just purely Star Trek. But they raised a bunch of money for Chase Masterson and Pop Culture Hero Coalition. Shout out to Lawrence. Nice. Uh, yeah, we love Lawrence. He's been part of a couple did of you virtual say, did Trek you say cons. Did, Did you say that? Shatner was going to space? Yeah. Oh, Ciroc. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Really? <laughs> really, uh, really Ciroc? Rock Tuesday, but, um, okay. Yeah, you guys got to tell him. This is yeah, the weather, coolest, weather, this the craziest thing. Well, it's like really windy. You can't, so you can't just guess that, but somebody has to go <laughs> yeah. open in the deep. Yeah. Well, some of it is yeah, like, is it space or is it the upper like echelon of the atmosphere? But it was supposed to be Tuesday and it just got moved to Wednesday because of windy conditions. 
it's above the Carmen he, line, so it's it's definitely in space. Oh, so Shatner should be like, let me guess, the... Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's, he, who's he going with? Is he going with Bezos or Brand? Old Jeff. Yeah, Be- yeah, Bezos. Yeah, him and Bezos. old Jeff yeah, side by side. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna ride the Blue uh, Origin thing, uh, the thing that looks like something, but I don't want to talk yes. about it. Yeah. What, is it <laughs> what does it look like? It looks I don't like want to talk rocket. about it. It's a rocket. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Uh, you got it exactly. It's a rocket. Yeah. Yeah. With no shrinkage. Looks like a rocket. No, the super so short. Rocket was supposed, like Ben Marie said, he was supposed to go up on Tuesday, but because yeah. of weather, they shifted it out to a thir- out to Wednesday launch. So this okay. Tuesday so coming up. Been, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, now it's Wednesday again. It's Actually, Wednesday. Yeah. Speaking of how it's shaped, uh, here is an actual picture <laughs> of William Shatner <laughs> holding the rocket that he will be going up in. Oh my god. Uh, it's exact, yeah. That's crazy. It's like a prophecy. <laughs> oh, it's almost identical. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's foreshadowing. No. Right? Oh, that's <laughs> that's almost like it's almost, that no. must be what Shaq was trying to make on Lower Dexas last week. Well, it's, oh, that's that's what he was trying to make. He's trying to make a rocket. <laughs> He brought up yeah. But it's crazy because uh, William Shatner was at New York Comic Con, and then he's going to Space uh, Wednesday, and then he's back at Galaxy Con next weekend. I'm like, it's insane. Maybe it's like a giant rice crispy treat. The at the day. next convention. Yeah, he'll just land in the parking lot and we come out. And get yeah, trying to be doing some of that tiger blood stuff. Yeah. That's all I can say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you put oh, that picture back up of Shatner with the oh, ice cream? Calm cream? down, Sue. Calm no, down. Sue, <laughs> Sue. <laughs> this is the real no, one. Not that one. Yeah. Not that oh. one. <laughs> I might have to do a Photoshop job of him holding the actual oh. rocket. Who knows? Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Oh, right, Scott. Yeah. That's a good idea. Gold to Scott at his finest. There we go. So was, yeah. was SNL yeah, a prophecy, yeah. too? Because SNL last week did a whole skit about, about uh, Bezo and... And, and Star Trek, Billionaire the new Space series. Mm. Yeah, the whole oh man, it was, it was crazy. So mm. I haven't watched any of those yet. I got to watch those. It's, it's classic. That's so. crazy. It's, mm. oh, oh, and George Takei <laughs> was at New York Comic Con on Friday, and I saw he was signing a bunch of teacups. <laughs> the Rice Krispies. Or, or it's it's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's a, it's a Rice Krispie log. It's what Snap, it is. crackle, oh, and man. pop. Right. Uh, anyway, so, anyway oh we got it homer yeah, homer homer join join me join me in a join me please join me yeah brian uh, oh, i hate man. to say this but brian, brian save us okay <laughs> so <You're if> we, <laughs> thanks homer so uh okay so here's a fun question for today and i want to start with lance on this question <laughs> Uh, but this is something that I was kind of thinking about when they they announced Chakotay would be returning to Star Trek on Prodigy. Now, I've long said that Mr. Robert Beltran has the nicest, smoothest, silkiest voice of anybody in Star Trek. I could listen to him talk. He can, you know, he could just he could do like those. Uh, those audio books he could do any anything like that would just or, or narrate documentaries he's got this beautiful voice very silky smooth so awesome it's made for voiceover so my question is do you know a, a specific character or a, a character or actor that was in star trek that has never done voiceover yet that you would like to hear doing voice over in, they all in lower decks books? in oh, lower decks. Like on- Don't ruin this for me, Anne Marie. <laughs> how, <about, laughs> how about a Star Trek actor that hasn't been in lower decks or the animated series or prodigy that you would like to hear do voiceover at somebody that you think would be good at voiceover? Um, hmm. That guy way down there on the yeah. bottom of the screen right now. Is. That guy on the bottom of the screen. That's the one I'd like to hear. I heard rumors. Yeah, he'd be good at it. Uh, yeah. But we're all different. A, I know. A, I mean, Homer. Yeah. I'm looking. So Rock's yeah, all the way on the bottom for me. Yeah, he's Ciroc's over here for me. Yeah. He's way down that way. <laughs> I was Number thinking Homer. Answer. <laughs> no, but, so Rock, Give it a shot. I'm Thank telling you, you, you know, I want to see that. I want to see that 
that mashup ep- episode, mashup episode with Lower Decks going to TAS with Shatner showing up. Yes. And Ciroc and and Mariner, you know, there's might be something going on there, you know, because the, the the intrepid oh, reporter yeah. that shows up, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Each other she served on DS. I know she's she's the she's the right age. I mean she's the right age, right? Yeah. You know? Who knows? For, you know, right when Ciroc was there, the whole bit. Mm. You know? Yeah, she probably knew Ciroc as a young eighteen year old when he was when he was hanging yeah. with the Dabble girls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's kids. Hanging this out is very out. true. Yeah, kids, kids hanging kids. out. Right. Yeah, nobody understands me like she does. It's way worse than <laughs> preachers' kids. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are even worse. <laughs> All right. So Lance, <laughs> we bought you a little bit of time there. Do you uh have some money for us? Yeah, I don't think it'd be too hard to imagine Ethan Phillips doing oh, something. Yes. So good. Because obviously any kind of character, you probably have him do like two or three characters and <laughs> it just would be, and just having him have a monologue for like five minutes would probably be pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a great yeah. one. Uh, that obviously makes us think of, you know, Jeff Combs is another character actor that would be amazing for it. And now he is. So all these great answers are taken already. But yeah, Ethan Phillips is a great one. Just don't let him tell any jokes. They're very naughty when he tells jokes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh eve what about you do you have a an actor or actress that you think would be great for voiceover or that you'd like to hear um it's quite hard i'm trying to think of ones that because there's quite a few of them have come back and done things in low decks recently i think nana would be nice to see in something new because i just love her voice anyway and she's just fantastic i'm sure everyone would love to see her so i think i'll go go with nana nice I think a few people agree with you. Mike Gu, uh, TJ seemed to be launched backwards with glee at that <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, I just love the, sort of the, the video she does on with Mama Nana on Instagram. If anyone's not signed up to those, they're just so amazing and so inspirational, sort of. And and they're, they're very regular, you know, quite a few times a week that she puts these on. And, I wake up and listen to those and you know, her voice, oh. the way that she delivers these messages are just brilliant and highly recommend them. Um, she's always got some um, really helpful ways of dealing with various things in life, but also she also then throws in fantastic cocktail making with her pet. Um, I'm not quite kind of sure what bird it is, but that's really cute when she's making cocktails with her pet. So highly recommend Luciano, that. Luciano the bird. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He's so cute. I think Terry Farrell just um, tweeted or on Instagram or something said it's been a, a exact year since those videos started. Yeah, I read she started. Yeah, she did. Oh, yeah, Separate. Well, uh, what do you th- and Eve? I'm surprised. I thought you were going to say one of the boys from uh, from Enterprise. You, you surprised me there. What do you I, think? Yeah, I was I was thinking of, of Dominic maybe for right. one of those. And it's a sort of crime drama, that, that, uh, it's sort of an episode of <laughs> and a voiceover episode of something about uh, a yeah, crime drama or something like that would be quite funny. Yeah. What do you think, Sue? I'm thinking what Eve's thinking or or Connor. Mm. And that's the end of that. <laughs> enough said <laughs> yeah would you want him to be himself or playing a different character that that should be the second half of the question is playing reprising their role or in or do you envision them as something different like would he be like a lawyer i think he'd be a cop. you know he's gonna be a police officer <laughs> police <laughs> All right. I'm up. Uh, whatever he would want to do, I think it would be great. Mm-hmm. I think if you're a fan, you want to see them all again. In and Ciroc, way. since Bill already mentioned it, what we're already thinking, if Lower Decks or Prodigy called you and said, hey, do you want to, how quickly would you say yes to them? Uh, I'd have to look at my schedule and double check to see if I'm any, any other Star Trek that are conflicting. 
Depends. Liar. You, know. you don't want it to be <laughs> <Liar. a seven laughs> <tree. laughs> yeah. uh, No, it would be. It would definitely be fun. Um, of course, it's it's different to me than uh, doing an animated voice a voiceover work than actually showing up on a set and wearing a costume. And um, it's actually a lot easier and uh, kind of less moment like uh, as a momentous event in your life or something that's special but i would still want you know be honored to be a part of something that i think is going to be going on for a long time and you wouldn't have to wear those outfits that would be the <laughs> yeah, that's, oh. that, yeah that's the but best you part. could if you that's wanted the best to part. <laughs> yeah in the, in the recording studio yeah. come on no by the end of the show srock was wearing some pretty sweet threads man come on wasn't wearing, wearing yeah. bus seats no more. He was wearing some sweet no threads by towards the end. That's yeah. Towards the end. Towards the end. Sorry, Homer. Yeah, sorry. 25 years. I should, what am I thinking? That was like yesterday. <laughs> I don't want to know <laughs> the outfits in advance. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's like Jesse. Is driving yeah. bus seat? Is he driving so we bus? Are, we're so joined us. by Jesse. It looks like his audio is still connecting. I don't know if you can hear us, Jesse, but what Why? we're talking about is uh, Star Trek actors that have not been on an animated series yet, but that we think would do well or that we'd enjoy hearing doing voiceover for an animated series. I hope you can hear that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say it again. I'll probably have to say it again. Don't crash. It's still connecting to audio. Um, yeah. um, I had a thought the other day, yeah. and uh, it's related to when Rex was on and he was driving. I think there could be a new question when you're getting auto insurance. He's like, are you a patron of the Seventh Rule podcast? In which case, <laughs> the goes, way up. All the way up. No. Yeah. <laughs> scary. 15% for you. Scary, Risk takers uh, and heartbreakers. That's what we are at the Seventh Rule round table. That's us. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, Scott, what do you think? Who would you like to hear doing voiceover? Uh, well, I pretty much when when they announced Kate Mulgrew was doing it, there is no voice on the planet like hers, so I was over mm -hmm. the moon for that. But I want to shoehorn a character back in. Let's have Scott McDonald come back and tell us that Tosk is okay. Oh, That's nice. what I want to know about. Yeah. Fifteen years later, he's still <laughs> running and he's still at it. So let's do that. That would be fun. I, I miss Tosk. Yeah. That was a long time ago. So. Hope he's still at it. Hope he's okay. But yeah, yeah definitely. are they allowed it to is... retire or as long as they yeah. keep running? Yeah. It is an honor <laughs> to be the prey. It's an honor <laughs> to be a, the prey. Just keep moving, Toss. You'll be all right. But yeah, I would like to hear Connor do some stuff too. He could play a nice Southern lawyer, he, uh, opposed to Dominic's police officer. If you work together, you know. He can, he can pull off that nice Mississippi <laughs> law and order Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Law down here. That yeah, would be see, cool. Like off. what what Sue's saying is, you know, are they allowed to retire? Like you have like seeing eye dogs or like police shepherds. They eventually, <laughs> at a certain age, they get to just retire. You know, and and if retirement home. Yeah, if these guys are being yeah. treated as prey, I wonder if at some point they go, all right, you know, you've lasted long enough, you can just go play in a you pasture win. somewhere or something. Uh, there's, there's no honor in going after uh, one that wounded. can't walk or yeah. has right. a broken hip or something. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Tosk is still running. There's no honor in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Anne-Marie, your thoughts? Um. I mean, I really want to hear The Rock as Jake talking to Shax and see Shax's response to like the, actually talking to the emissary's son. Um, oh, and maybe, yes. And maybe. Oh, you know, yeah. Have, like, Jake oh, that's a good one. I think he would officiate Shax and Tano's marriage. So that could be an episode. Oh, very Ooh. good. Maybe but we what do you really want Shax from came Henry? Back. Um, we also want oh. Michael Limo. <laughs> as oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we see yeah. that. We see that. <laughs> that would be nice. Oh. Okay, Homer Freezy out somewhere in New Yeezy. Yeah, this is a tough one, but um, I, I would love to hear Tony Todd 
on lower decks. Oh, oh yeah. Um, his voice is instantly recognizable and whatever whatever the role is. I mean, it could be the 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 brother who who had his mind wiped and uh he's he's mm. passing through um oh, Kern. yeah i think it would be fun mm. yeah. yeah that's cool thanks, yeah. <laughs> thanks. whatever yeah. Thank <laughs> I thought so too. that's a good one i like that omer he could yeah. be like um so like he's the lower the decker that <laughs> made captain on this last one yeah. when they go back to when they go back to konos he could be part of the council and he could be part of the investigative team and all that. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think or something so. along those lines. Thank you. It's a good one. I like Appreciate that. it. Appreciate it. I like Mark Alimo too. Though. Well, that's, we that's, want Mark that's Alimo. definitely a good one. We want yeah. him. I there's would, somebody I would like, there's somebody Mark on Alimo. YouTube that comments after every video, we want Mark Alimo. And I feel like with every episode that we don't have Mark Alimo, I keep watching that thumbs down button to see if eventually this guy's just gonna be like, all right, I, that's it. You guys get a thumbs down, dislike on the video. That's his revenge. I'd love to have Mark Alimo. So please, if you're watching, send Mark Alimo to us and we will have him. We want Mark Alimo too. I you know, on the tweet? It was oh, like 19 comments. <laughs> Is he on the tweets or the uh, Instagrams um, or the yeah. uh, whatever? In the chat, Mark, he's no. all over the place. Mark, no, 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 Mark Alamo, Mark Alamo. Oh, okay. that's what I'm talking about. oh, I think I know, I know, I know, I know who's in the chats. I know who's in, in the chats with the Mark. We want Mark Alamo. I know that guy. So I don't know him personally. Extremely graceful. But I'm very. I I try to be as as welcoming and yeah, caring as accounts. possible to everybody that comes in. That's right. Sweet. That's so sweet. Chat pack and ch slash chat fam has to be the best place on the internet. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of best place on the internet, TJ, your thoughts. Who would you like to hear doing voiceover from Star Trek and in what capacity? Okay, first I'm going to cheat and tell a short story. So uh, I went on Star Trek, the cruise a few years ago. Uh, this was the second cruise and they had Nana Visitor and Renee Urbergenwa do love letters. And it was amazing listening to them because it had been so long since I heard their voices together. Wow. You know, outside of uh, watching, rewatching DS9 that uh, I had like an emotional experience doing that uh, performance. So um, if I could listen to those two do anything, you know, together, that would be great. Um, so, okay. So my real answers are obviously Ciroc. And obviously. I was thinking like uh, doing like narrations and things like that. So my mind went to LeVar Burton. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. And Homer told me I had to give Jeffrey's answer also. And Jeffrey <laughs> was not thinking about like narration. He just gave like a regular answer and he said it should be Brent Spiner. Mm. Totally. That's, okay. Jeffrey. That's so Jeffrey. That's such a Jeffrey so thing Jeffrey. to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just one more bubble bath. I think Jesse's connected. Yes, yeah. finally. And this time I can actually hear people. Great. We can <laughs> hear you too. So Jesse, to catch you up, we are talking about Star Trek actors that have not done voiceover in one of the animated series yet, but that we'd like to hear doing something. You know, since Robert Beltran has been announced to be in Prodigy and Jeffrey Combs just recently was in Lower Decks. So up next is <laughs> Dr. Muhammad Noor. That too, this is just based on voice, not based on the characters or anything like that. But Casey Biggs, love his voice. Mm, I, think yes. really great. I was actually trying to look online to see if he's actually done voice acting, but I didn't see him. The oh, other one, much more recent, and this one couldn't do the same character, but Oyen Olajejo from uh, play, person who plays Owosakan in yeah. uh, Discovery. Mm. Love her voice, love her intonations too. Well, so, she sings too, like doesn't she? Those, yeah. yeah. Mm. I think that's how Casey Biggs was discovered for Star Trek. He was. Um, like narrating the video that they show at the Alamo in San Antonio. And oh. Ira used to go there to relax. 
So we heard his voice on the video and then found out how to get him on Green Space Mountain. Mm. That's a good one. Very good. Two good ones. Uh, Mike Goo, what do you think? Well, um, uh, I, I know that I can't say Kate. I, I love Kate. Um, so <laughs> when I moved to the States when I was 10, it, it, it was like on and, and it really just kind of like, I think she's she was my, like my TV mom. And she also mm. had um, narrated uh, the two like Mosaic and, and maybe something else Pathways. Um, and so there were audiobooks that I remember getting from, you know, from the library and just listening on tape, um, and being, being lost in it. But I would say Jennifer Lean, um, Ooh, yeah. a voice, like a very silky yeah. voice. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was very low and smooth. Yeah. Yeah. In mm -hmm. any capacity. <clears throat> Good one. Melissa P. Longo. <laughs> um, uh, um, okay, so t to echo Eve, yes, Nana would be great because she's awesome. But also because on the Star Trek cruise, she did um, this this reading with Ethan Phillips and all of that um, and other people on there. But she does accents and voices really well. Like she's very versatile. So, so not to steal Eve's, I'm not going to say that one, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's two people that kind of have been rolling around my, in my head. One was, um, Ethan Peck. The first time I heard him on the microphone, his voice is like butter. I mean, <laughs> it is, yeah. his voice is yeah amazing but also i think um max would be great to yeah. do yeah. he i mean he's so great with comedy as it is and um and you know changing his inflections and all that stuff so i think max would be great those are my answers <laughs> Exquisite. that's three nana vote <laughs> well, it's like twelve Ciroc <laughs> votes. <laughs> so, just well, because that too, yeah. but that's that's because stating we're not the saying obvious. it. Yeah, I mean, we all know. Yeah. It's, yeah. All right, Bill, aka War Dog Heim, in the friendly skies of Montana. Oh, there's so many awesome voices in Trek. There's so many. Oh, sorry, motorcycle boy going by. Um, God, I thought I was done with Ciroc, but I guess I get another shot. It's cool. cool. Um, you know, I like all the choices that have been made so far because they're just, they are just great voices. Um, and for me, I think the voice that reaches the deepest for me these days, I would, I would love to hear Avery do some more voice work because... Yeah. His voice is just, I just, you know, I mean, I, I fell in love with the character, what he did on, on Spencer Ryer. And then when he became the captain on DS9, I was like, yes. And he's got that, yeah. you know, and he can do so much with his voice. It's just awesome. And that's what I would like to see. I know he's done with Trek or whatever, but uh, still, mm. that's my, that's my wish. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be us. Mr. Jesse Taggart, your thoughts? Um, well, Melissa kind of stole one of them already. <gasps> so I've already got it back up. Because <laughs> I was going to go with Ethan Phillips. Um, but also Robert Picardo. Mm -hmm. I just think both of them are just such comedians as well that they would just be a perfect fit for something like Lower Decks. Mm. Yeah, uh, so who was it that mentioned, was it you, Lance, that mentioned Ethan? Yeah, that'd be pretty solid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but nobody mentioned Picardo. Yeah. That's a great one, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm oh, sorry to steal your answer, then. <laughs> you know, I came in late and had technical issues. At least you, you parked your car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Thank yes. You. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Geico thanks you. 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> so I had a little bit of time to think about this while you guys were giving your great answers. I was thinking that Scott Bakula would be great in Lower Decks, but as the character of Samuel Beckett. Because <laughs> that's a, from Quantum Leap, right? So he right. shows up. Oh, that shows be up, perfect. And Mariner says, who are you? And he says, I'm Dr. Beckett. Who are you? And she goes, I'm Beckett too. And he goes, oh boy. And then. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, oh, the boy. Right? That's... That would be oh, perfect. Oh my gosh. Uh, an honorable mention so you, to Doug no. Jones because Doug Jones has like a great voice and he's supremely talented and we love the shit out of him. What are you saying, Bill? I was just going to say, the only problem is, is that when Sam Beckett shows up, he's in somebody else's body. It's just yeah. his consciousness. Oh, boy. So he, he only yeah. sees him. You're he right. only sees himself. <laughs> and he sees himself. He sees them in the mirror. But, you know, that's so whole, So even better. So he arrives in Beckett Mariner's body. And oh, then no. people, see, and then <laughs> Boimler sees him and goes, no. hey, Beckett. Beckett. And he's like, what the? Is, you, can you can see me? You can see me? Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> he shows yeah. up in Tosk, just passing. Oh, God. Yeah, he's with him in Tosk. <laughs> oh, man. Got to get that Beckett joke in, huh? Yeah. Sirach, have you ever seen yeah. Quantum Leap? It's kind of old school. Oh, big time. I love, I, I love. Uh, Scott Bakula from that show. We used to watch it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a good show. <laughs> if if Quantum Leap and uh, Columbo were both both on, which one would you watch? Oh, that's easy. Ooh. Oh, uh, man. that's easy. <laughs> Lieutenant Columbo. Yeah, he's, he's too good. Just one more. So, thing. Mr. Frizzell, <laughs> just just oh, one man. more thing. Just one more <laughs> thing. Too good. <laughs> 1989. Jeez, and you're calling that old school. Well, that's 32 (laughs) years ago. Yes, it is. That's a significant amount of time. Well, uh, let's uh, close out this recorded roundtable thing. We'll stick around a little bit and tell secrets to each other off the air. But uh, we do want to thank all of you for joining in and chiming in on the the news of the day. Uh, Jesse, we also talked about the news of the day uh, from New York City Comic Con about basically the whole weekend. There's been little nuggets being dropped. And Mike over here is better than all of us because he's already seen the first episode. A prodigy, he's got signed stuff with Kate Mulgrew. (laughs) The face you're making. I was just about to ask if uh, the first episode was the news. <laughs> You've been boimed. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Anyway, everybody at home, thanks very much. See you next time. Always remember the seventh rule. Mm-mm.